I always want to emphasize the big differences in poverty rates between kids who live with both of their parents, their married parents, uh, and kids who live with a, in a female-headed family. These are huge differences. Uh, and in the past, even now to some extent, it's one of the main causes in, of poverty and one of the reasons we have so much trouble fighting poverty is because the number of kids in female-headed families where they're four or five times more likely to be poor keeps increasing, increasing, increasing. Uh, so that is a very important thing to keep in mind. Um, median income also is not completely a bad story. Uh, median income uh, is not a good story, but uh, this is, I think, what some economists might predict, that the uh, income is going to, it's going down, and then it's going to level off, and then it's going to go up, and so maybe this is uh, leveling off. It did continue to go down for some groups, uh, but overall uh, uh, income is, is not a good story, but not a horrible story. Uh, I also like to emphasize, this is last year's data. We have one set of data for this year, but I just want to emphasize something that Rich Brookhauser will talk about quite a bit, and maybe some of the other panelists as well, and that is that the picture of poverty that you get from the Census Bureau official poverty rate is flawed in many ways, as everybody knows, and that's why we have a new uh, measure. And by the way, that measure will be out uh, on November 13th. So the Census Bureau is going to do what it did last year, and it's going to uh, publish the supplemental poverty measure again, and they'll do that on November 13th. And that will show what I'm, what this chart shows. And as you can see, if you look at the mean, if you in, include a whole set of government benefits, it doesn't have much effect on income. But if you look at the second quintile, so this would be, for in the case of single moms, it would be roughly between 10000 and 20000 income, and then the bottom quintile, under 20000 The SADA line is what they get more or less in the state or nature without any government benefits. But if you add the government benefits, their income goes up quite a bit. And this is a very important thing, especially in this town, because we spend a lot of money on, on means-tested programs. My estimate is we spend at least a trillion dollars a year, if you count the state dollars and the federal dollars on means-tested programs. And they are more or less completely left out of the Census Bureau numbers. So that's a very important story.